Coming up on Nightside, we'll bring you the latest on controversial issues the NFL has been facing, including the inflation of the footballs. Plus, we're just one day away from the big game. We have the latest from Phoenix. And one lucky Seahawk fan has been granted the trip of a lifetime. We'll bring you that and more coming up on Nightside. Live from the KYMA studios, covering Yuma in the Imperial Valley, this is Nightside on KYMA News 11. Thank you for joining us. I'm Molly Lang. Well, Roger Goodell just finished talking with the media as he talked about several different controversial issues, including the inflation of footballs, Ray Rice scandal, and Marshawn Lynch's cooperation with the media, or lack thereof. News 11's Heather Yako begins our team coverage from Phoenix with more. I think Marshawn understands uh, the importance of the Super Bowl, the importance of his appearance, and the importance of him as an individual in this game. It's been a tough year for the NFL. Goodell talks about creating a new personal conduct policy to make a difference in domestic violence cases with the NFL. We've done a great deal to bring more awareness to these issues of domestic violence and sexual assault. We are committed to that. We are working with various organizations to try to make sure that we, as my advisors like to say, Jane Randall's over here, normalize the conversation. When asked about the inflation of the footballs, Goodell says they are focused on two questions that pose the most controversy. Why were some footballs used in the game that were not in compliance with the rules, and was this the result of deliberate action? Ted Wells has completed his investigation and made his determination based on all relevant evidence. We will share his report publicly. Why we decided to go with Arizona first of all, 49. Well, Arizona earned it. We've had a great experience here in Arizona in prior years. Uh, they put together a, a winning bid that our ownership selected, uh, and they deserve it. And I think the proof is in the pudding. They have done an outstanding job this week. We couldn't be happier with the hospitality, with the, the plans, uh, the cooperation. Put on an event like this takes a lot of people, and this community has uh, wrapped their arms around every opportunity and made the Super Bowl even bigger and better for our fans and for the NFL overall. So uh, we're thrilled about being here, and uh, we look forward to coming back. Roger Goodell mentions there are a few things they need to focus on to improve the NFL, technology, innovation of the game, and safety. Now keep it here on News 11 where we give you the full Super Bowl coverage leading up to the big game. In Phoenix, I'm Heather Yako. Well, thank you, Heather. It is Super Bowl Eve tonight in Arizona, and the experts say tomorrow's game between two evenly matched teams, the Patriots and Seahawks, has the potential to be one of the best of all time. Fans of both teams are getting ready for the big game, and Jay Gray is with them live tonight outside the stadium in Glendale, Arizona. The night in Arizona, and the host city is packed. Super Bowl! Super Bowl! And ready to party. Super Bowl! Fans rocking at Super Bowl Central. Athletes and celebrities walking the red carpet at NFL Honors, the league's final bash before the big game. With the countdown to kickoff now measured in hours instead of days, it's crunch time for fans who made the trip without a ticket to the game. It's virtually impossible for the average show to get a ticket to the Super Bowl. The cost for a ticket right now is more than $9,000 each, the highest resale price ever. And those in the business say there's only two to three hundred left. Bad news for fans still hoping to score a seat. You're seeing the average price steadily rise as we get closer because there's just not as many tickets available right now. And for those lucky enough to have a ticket. Uh, we got three. Can I ask how much? Uh, well, we got them early, so we only paid 2300 The experience is sure to be... It's going to be sick. It's awesome. It's, we're 50-yard line. I'm so excited. In fact, some say worth every penny. It's the most amazing thing you can go to, and it's a once-in-a-lifetime kind of deal. A deal for some at any price. And analysts point out even fans who bought earlier are paying more for a ticket this year. The average cost around $4,000. That's up more than a thousand dollars from last year's Super Bowl. Jay Gray, NBC News, Glendale. Well, for more Super Bowl coverage, tune in tomorrow after the game. Well, here in Yuma tonight was the Yuma Silver Spur Rodeo Queen Pageant, which is hosted by the JC Club. The contestants 
compete for speech modeling with questions and word association and they will continue the competition at the rodeo on Saturday, February 14th, where they will get awarded for horsemanship and several different categories that they have to compete for. The contestants are competing for rodeo queen and rodeo team queen. This is the royalty pageant, so it's the first portion of the competition for the rodeo queens. The current rodeo queens that are getting ready to come out, and we've got some visiting royalty here, and it's, it's a pretty tough competition, but I think these girls will be fine. All right, well, we have seen a little rain and now just some humidity, but hopefully those dry, warm temperatures are coming our way. Well, we have Nick Marusiak in the studio to let us know what to expect. Nick? Well, unfortunately, Molly, it doesn't look like dry and warm is in our forecast for tonight. You still see a little bit of clouding. That's not as much as before. That's because the low has weakened some, and also it has moved towards the southeast, and that's pulled all the moisture even past Phoenix. And looking past us, you saw basically the bands of showers try to make their way over the mountains and watch them just fall apart, almost right as if the county line was blocking their path. And you saw this time and time again, even south towards Dayton, up near Quartzsite. So we saw those and early and then by Brawley and El Centro you saw that basically the clouds have almost left so I'm expecting mostly clear skies for tonight and even when you look towards Blythe and Palo Verde that was amongst the most active earlier in the day at least on satellite radar while well, they're clear and of course Yuma has seen clear skies just some basically I guess that's ground clutter which is stuff around the radar dirt, that kind of a thing, and that's going to just basically give us a signature on their temperatures right now. 50s and 60s, it's nice out, and 40s tonight and 50, 50 in Yuma, 49 in Blythe, and 46 in El Centro and Imperial. Warm tomorrow, you got it. We're going to talk how warm are we going to get, especially later in the week in your eight-day forecast. Let's send things over to Holly. All right, well, thank you so much for that, Nick. One Seattle Seahawks fan was given the surprise of a lifetime when and we'll have that heartwarming story coming up next. Stay with us. MA Studios, covering Yuma in the Imperial Valley. This is KYMA News 11. Welcome back. Well, an employee of NHL's Minnesota Wild is battling cancer and scheduled for surgery next week. But much to his surprise, the lifelong Seattle Seahawks fan is going to the Super Bowl. Boyd Huppert has the story of a man whose spirit is soaring thanks to the kindness and generosity of his coworkers. Hey, Kirsten, this is Trent Michaels of the Minnesota Wild giving you a call here. You would expect the employees of the Minnesota Wild to be loyal to this team, but not this one. I always said someone's got to root for him, so why not me? <laughs> a Seattle Seahawks fan since boyhood, Chris Turns has been a bit distracted from football this season. Yes. A cancer diagnosis will do that. A lot of tears. I mean, it's, it's tough. Chris's co-workers put up those signs, made meals for his family, even hung their Christmas lights. But save yeah! this. That's Chris with his surprise Super Bowl tickets. 61 people contributed. Brett Miller was the co-worker who put out the email just this week. $4,000 in less than 24 hours. I mean, I was just I was blown away. And those are Chris's donors, from the cubicles and ticket operations to the interns to the owner of the team. It means so much just because of where it came from. Yeah, it's a big deal. Tickets to the Super Bowl less than a month after finishing chemo, a week before cancer surgery. So you can hear I'm getting a little choked up again thinking about it. Seahawks football fan, but wild at heart. I'm truly, truly blessed to work here and, and have the family that I do here. That's a really special story. Well, Chris and his wife flew to Arizona today for the game, and in just over a week, he'll fly to Indianapolis for a testicular cancer surgery. Well, some Seattle Seahawks super fans recently rolled into Phoenix in style. The 12th band fans brought their own double-decker bus decked out in Seahawks everything, and it's called The Beast. The bus features five big screen TVs, drinks on tap, 
plenty of seating and plenty of attention. Now there's even a 48 speaker stereo system, stadium seats from the kingdom and more memorabilia that you can shake a stick at. The cost of this extravaganza Ganza tailgating beast is about $250,000. Well, one of the most important parts of the Super Bowl is often one of the most overlooked, the turf. We'll tell you why one staff member says it's really the start of the show coming up next. Your satellite and radar, but first your webcam. You know what? It's beautiful outside. We're going to talk all about what the week ahead is going to look like. That's coming right up after this break. All right, well, meteorologist Dick Merziak was letting me know that it's going to be warm soon, but on the eve of Super Bowl Sunday, I want to know what is it going to be tonight? Nick, can you tell me that? Uh, well, you know what? It looks a little bit chilly right now. You think 57, we're on a way to cooler weather, right? Well, you look at our dew point, and we're seeing 40s and 51 and 53 over in Welt, and you're seeing all these temperatures. And what this means to me is, well, Fog's going to be concerned tonight. When you have humidities this high at this time at night, you know, you're going to see some fog, especially in areas that were known to see fog. Summerton, the foothills, of course, you know, could all see fog. And again, that's because we're seeing this moist air. And it's also notable that we're not seeing the strong winds. So again, once we kind of calm these down, maybe about three miles an hour, I think that's where we'll start to see real heavy fog mixture. And you also want to notice these are out of the west and the northwest. So we're starting to kick in that drier air that we usually get out of the north and northwest. So we're starting to finally move things away. And one of the reasons I think we'll get down into 40s in some spots now, 49 in Blythe, 50 in Yuma, 50 in Welton, and 52 in Mexicali. And you look at El Centro and Imperial, that's one area that I could also see some fog. So it's not just eastern Yuma County or western Yuma County. It's all over the place. I believe we'll start to see some fog. Now, looking towards tomorrow, once we get the fog out of here, 74 in Dayton, 75 in Tacna, and 75 at the range. And you talk about, oh, it's going to be warmer, right? Well, one of the reasons is high pressure is going to set over us. So for Yuma tomorrow, 75 there, 75 in Martinez Lake, and 74 in San Luis. So no matter where you are, it's going to be a warm day tomorrow. And it's going to be actually warmer in the western part of our area. So we're looking at 73, 74 at Cibola Lake. And then you move to Imperial County and you look at some of these temperatures. Wow, wow, wow. El Centro, 77. Calipatria, 74. Holtville, 76. And the reason I say that is think about what it was like today. We barely got out of the 60s in some spots. And even yesterday was a little bit on the chilly side if you're a fan of these kind of temperatures. And when you look at 76 compared to 60s, well, you know what? I'll take it. I'm sure a lot of other people that are seeing freezing weather would love this. But of course, we're used to it here. And that's one of the reasons why we love it here, is it not? Well, you look towards our future cast and you notice basically a dome sets over us. That's that high pressure. And what happens is high pressure sets up like this. Everything stays up towards the north. So we're going to continue seeing an express train through Salt Lake City, just north of San Francisco. And you see that express train. Otherwise, nothing going on below us. So it's very, very quiet in our neck of the woods. But of course, you know, you look towards Northern California and Seattle. So if you are traveling back home, Perhaps after the Super Bowl, you may see a few delays. And you look at anywhere else you want to go, check it out for tomorrow. Palm Springs at 78. Let's say you are going to Phoenix. 67, sunny, perfect day to catch a game. Or you know what? Maybe you're not interested in the game, but you have a few buddies who want to tailgate. Looks to be great. You know what? It's a great day to go no matter where you are. Now, we look at the future moisture. You notice we don't really clear up out of the deep blues. We're still in the light blues, so I still expect a little moisture out there. It's not going to be that dry, dry conditions that it was maybe two weeks ago, but I still expect it to go down just ever so slightly. Now, that's going to continue throughout the entire week, but another thing that's going to continue is high pressure is going to set up over shop over us, and that high pressure is really going to allow things to warm up throughout the rest of your eight days. Check out some of these temperatures, 80 Friday into Saturday, and we're talking mid-80s by next weekend, and mostly sunny skies the whole entire time, and you'll look to the overnight lows. They will be warmer as well. Let's send things over to Molly. 
Thank you, Nick. Well, the big game is just one day away, as we know, less than 24 hours away. But can you imagine having issues with the tickets you purchased for the Super Bowl when you arrived in Phoenix? Well, that's what's happening to a couple of the fans. We'll have that coming up next. Stay with us. Welcome back. Well, the NBC affiliate in Phoenix is reporting that hundreds of people who bought Super Bowl tickets and traveled to Phoenix for the big game are now learning that they don't have tickets after all. Mark Curtis reports. Sophia Ross from Glendale is a lifelong Patriots fan. In fact, she's treasurer of the Patriots fan club of Arizona. $2,200 for a ticket and then if you promise a ticket for a week and then Licensed brokers can't even get the tickets. Daryl Kikuchi from Seattle says he had a free flight, a place to stay, and then the email came. I, I read it and I was, this can't be real. You know, I everything else fell into place. Matt Bumala and Derek Summers are both Seahawks fans from Portland, Oregon. They jumped on two tickets by halftime of the AFC Championship. On the drive from Vegas, they got a call. We get this phone call from Ticket City informing us that they don't have our tickets. And we said, what do you mean you don't have our tickets? We paid for these tickets. They all did. But in the world of big game ticketing, brokers gamble on being able to fulfill their pricier ticket requests on the sales of fans like Sophia, Daryl, and Matt. But this year, demand for this Super Bowl has been out of sight. So much so that brokers are scrambling and diehard fans are being left far short of the goal line. I've been to every other game this season and, you know, wanted to be here for for the final and you know I'll still be here um, I guess I'll be celebrating with everybody else you know the the average folk out that can't get into the the high price event you know that's what it is I can't even imagine well I hope they get their money back well, one of the most important parts of the Super Bowl is often one of the most overlooked. But for some NFL staffers, the turf is the real star of the show. This year's Super Bowl showcases a one-of-the-kind way to get that grass ready for the game, which, after all, starts from the ground up. NBC's Haley Jackson reports. Football's biggest names are ready for the sport's biggest game, but these MVPs don't get a red carpet. Instead... Donnie, you ready? Crews roll out something greener. Ready? Go! You've heard of a retractable roof? This is a retractable field, a turf surface that usually lives outside the stadium. It allows the, the field to be maintained out there in the, the bright heat of the Arizona sun. But before game time, the grass makes its move on a kind of tray, the only one like it in the country. In a game of inches, that's how the field rolls in, a little at a time, until 19 million pounds of turf is under the dome and under the close watch of groundskeepers. Really, from every point here on, it goes down a notch. So we have to really start rubbing on it and really start paying attention to it. 92,000 square feet of grass, meticulously maintained and babied until the big day. Field crews here are actually brushing each blade of grass. Groundskeepers are really the only folks organizers want on the field. Everybody else has to stay behind this white line. They want to keep the turf as pristine as possible. Problem is, that can be hard. This halftime show is going to be crazy. Katy Perry has a halftime performance to practice. They want a perfect show. We want a perfect field. So all of that has to be juggled and put together. It's a compromise to keep the performers and players happy with the world watching. I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than Super Bowl. All of the world's eyes are on this facility. It's, it's, it, there's no better feeling. Because for these guys, it's not about the plays on the field, just what's growing on it. For today, Hallie Jackson, NBC News, Glendale, Arizona. All right, well, there is a lot that goes into that. Well, coming up after the break, a dog saves an owner from dying. We'll tell you how coming up next. Stay with us. Welcome back. Well, a man's dog saved him from freezing to death after he suddenly fell into a coma outside for a whole night in northeast China. Now, days ago, Lao Zhenzi fell in a faint at the gate of the factory where he was working 
due to the hypoglyce hypoglycemia. Wow, I wish I could get that out. Hypoglycemia that caused by go. his diabetes. Anyway, the temperature that night dropped to lower than 14 degrees Fahrenheit, which just sounds just absolutely freezing. Luckily, the dog was able to revive him and just like, you know, while he was falling in and out of the coma, um, he was able to save his life. That's, That's a pretty incredible story. I want that dog around me all the time. I want that dog. <laughs> all right, Nick, who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? Who do I want or who do I think? Who do you think? Seattle. And I know you're from the area, so are you yes. rooting for Seattle? Yes. I'll see you guys tomorrow night after the game. Have a good one.